Hi there. Having completed my video series on backgammon for complete beginners, I've been getting quite a few comments and feedback and messages online. Uh, can I just say that without exception nearly all of them have been really complimentary and I've had some very kind comments regarding the videos and I'm sincerely grateful for that. It's been a real pleasure to read the messages. I've also been receiving some very good suggestions about what I might feature in the future. And some of the commenters have asked, having done recommendations for the software for Backgammon, did I have any recommendations for good books? So I thought I'd do a video um, just recommending a couple of books that are pitched mainly at the sort of just beyond beginner range for the people who've finished watching my previous videos and want to just carry on a bit further but also something for the more intermediate and uh, towards advanced players as well. Now, I have to say, in my opinion, backgammon players are not well catered for by books. It's not that a lot haven't been written. There was a fair bulk of them written, especially in backgammon, backgammon's uh, heyday in the 1970s. But now, the trouble with the, most of the works being done in the 70s is twofold. Firstly, of course, being old, most of the books are out of print now, and they're hard to come by, or at least overpriced if you go to an auction sites like eBay, I find. And the other thing is, when Backgammon was extensively written about in the 70s, the modern computer analysis that we have the luxury of using now, with the neural net technology, didn't exist and wasn't used. So a lot of the plays that were thought to be correct back then in the 1970s I've been found to be wrong since. So you'll find a lot of early backgammon texts have, have, have give people wrong moves. A lot of it is still very valid, of course, and the, some of the best analysis was written back then. But you have to be experienced enough to spot the plays where neural net analysis has made it redundant now, and we know better. But for beginners, I aren't going to really be able to differentiate this different, so I'm not going to recommend books back from that. I'll think of some more recent ones. But anyone who's interested in going back to the uh, early books and a complete list of well, about every backgammon book ever made can be found at a site and I'll put a link uh, down here for that which shows really good information on backgammon books of the past and present. Including what I would say is, and I have to just mention this, um, probably the best backgammon book ever written, and I think most experts would, would agree with this, was Paul McGreal's Backgammon, written in 1976. It was an absolutely legendary book, and very difficult to come by now. They're like gold dust. Um, but anyway, I'll get back to my recommendations now. Now, today, as I said, I don't think we're well catered for, in, on the whole, and I went to the library today in town and I thought, let's just see what books are available in the library for people interested in backgammon. And in a fairly large library, I managed to find one book, just one, on backgammon. And so I got it out. And it's this one. And it's Paul Lamford's Starting Out in Backgammon. This is the only backgammon book they had in the entire library. Uh, Paul Lamford... Uh, a British player. Um, uh, definitely a beginner's book this one. Uh, it's, it's one I read year, uh, quite a long time ago. I think it first came out in about 2001. I personally do not like it very much. Uh, it's not a terrible book by any means. I just find it a little bit lightweight, uh, not just in terms of the thickness of the book but also in a lot of the content. And some of it I fundamentally disagree with. And I'll just show, isn't it? Mark here what I'm sort of talking about here. Pay no mind to the Dragon Age Origins manual, using it as a bookmark. You can see the illustrations are quite good, um, and it's fairly standard stuff. But there's an example here. That's why I, this is a sort of thing I disagree with, which puts me off this book. This is an opening moves guide, um, and this is to tell you what to play if you have a 2 1 as an opening move. And the move that they suggest. You can, I don't know whether it shows well on this camera, we'll see, is to play the two down from the midpoint here and to split the back checkers with the one. Now it's a perfectly fine move. 
he won't go too far wrong with it, but it's just such a timid move. I think most players would prefer a much more aggressive 2-1 than this. Uh, you could still bring the 2 down here, but it's much better to slot the 5 point with the 1 in most cases here. Um, when you do that, you've got 3 builders here, here and here to make that 5 point on the next turn if black doesn't roll a 4 and hit it. And if this is the better, it's more aggressive, it's a stronger play. And I can understand them recommending this move, but it's not even mentioned, it's not suggested as an alternative either. And I think the problem with this is, and similarly on the previous page with the 4-1 opening, again here they, it's, it says to split at the back, bring the 4 down. And that, that is more generally the correct move here. But if there are situations, particularly if you're trailing badly in a match, it, it's much better to bring the 4 down here and slot with the 1. Again here on the 5 point. It's an aggressive, stronger play. And if you don't get hit back, it leaves you in a very strong position. Um, and I think this leads to timid thinking. And beginners need to learn, in my opinion, or, or let's say novice players, just beyond beginners, need to learn that... Leaving blocks is not always a bad thing. Leaving them haphazard in any old hour, of course, is not good. But there are occasions where leave, don't be afraid of leaving like a slotted block on the five point here. It, it, but, you know, you've got to be more aggressive than this. This book reeks of timidity. And uh, I don't like it for that reason. Okay, so two of my. Uh, that's the only book they had at the library, so I've got my own books here. Here is the first one I'm recommending, and it's a good continuation. For, from my beginner's guide for people who want to go a bit further and it is the backgammon for dummies uh, written in the, if you've ever seen any of the other dummies books for all things, it's written in the same sort of style it's entertaining, it, it, it's nicely laid out but very informative, it's written by Chris Bray who is the um, uh, backgammon columnist for the independent newspaper and I'll put a link up, hopefully here to see another video uh, featuring Chris Bray when he was on the very good program Gammon Night Live which used to be on one of the satellite channels quite a few years ago and it's a very good video I'd recommend you watch that uh, and I like this book it is a beginner's book again but it's not afraid to get you thinking about the, the advanced thinking quickly but in a in a gentle way so if, even on the very first uh, page if we go here to page 15 very early on it mentions making use of arithmetic and this is a key thing in backgammon that you want to learn early you want to get into quickly is thinking about the mathematics of the game it sounds very daunting for beginners and this is why I haven't really gone into it in my initial videos but it's the first thing you really need to learn once you've got the basics down then you've got to start thinking about this and it's not as horrific as people think oh I've got to do maths it's not that bad um, the whole point of backgammon is a game of managed probabilities. Of course, it's dice rolls determine your available moves, but it's how you use that, how you maximise good rolls for yourself, minimise good rolls for your opponent. And starting to think about how mathematics works in conjunction with the game is a really good starting point. And I like that this book, even though it's a beginner's book and it doesn't present it in a harsh or very technical way too early, but it gets you thinking about it very quickly. And then when the book starts... Again, another Dragon Age Origins bookmark. Oh, and that code has been redeemed, by the way, in case anybody thinking of claiming those. Um, and here it starts, and it gets you thinking about the dice distributions and uh, that kind of thing very quickly. Learn it, and this can improve players' play dramatically. Get thinking about it early and in a simple way. And I like the way that this book does that. Very, very good for that. And then, uh, let's see, and here you'll see, just as a comparison with the other book, the Paul Lamford book, here is the description of the opening plays, and this one is not afraid to discuss the 2-1 bringing down and the slot. Good advice early on for nice, strong, aggressive play. So I much prefer that. And another simple recommendation, it also has chapters on... Uh, internet play and computer analysis, but any any author that uses a title for their uh, article taken from a Pink Floyd song has got to be worth a read. So you can see that's that one. Strongly recommend that. Show the back, and there we go.